This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today we're going to take a look at a new tool that I found that basically solves two problems. It's the 10,000 code limit that Webflow place on embed elements and page level and uh, global custom code areas, but also solves a problem of management and working within teams with regards to custom code. And as an added extra, it can actually help you learn how to code with built-in AI features that enable you to ask how to do certain things and the AI will tell you and just help you learn a bit of JavaScript. So it sounds amazing. The tool is called Slater. It's fairly new, it's fairly janky. It's really, really interesting. So if you like the sound of that, smash the like button and let's get on with it. So here is Slater and it seems to have a lot of traction uh, from people over on Twitter. So it seems to be doing well. It's a free trial, but the pricing starts at $10 a month. So it's, it's not cheap, but it's pretty good. I've already started a free trial and I'm all set up here. I would go and <laughs> start from scratch to show you kind of how it's done but i'll be honest the app is a little bit janky and so if i delete this project then i can't create a new one so that's probably a bit of feedback for slater um either way i have my project here and if i open it up you'll see that it asks me to create a new js file so i'm just going to create a main js file and you can choose it to run either globally or on specific pages now the script that we use to, to handle all this, to load it, you'll still place that in the global kind of custom code area in the footer, and we'll do that now, but you decide as a per file basis where you want it to run. So I have created a test page that I'm gonna restrict it to here, and I'm gonna create that page. And from here, I'm free to write any sort of JavaScript I want. So console.log, uh, hello from main and if, if I save this you can save it to production or you can save it to dev and what this means is that it will run it, certain files will run only on your webflow domain webflow.io domain and then if you save to production that will actually push to your to your live website the one on your your sort of custom domain as it were so i've created my file here and what you want to do is go down to the script here or down here and you'll get given this custom bit of code and you're going to want to paste that make sure i copied it you're going to want to paste that in the global site settings of your project so i've already done that here uh, you'll see that i've pasted it in there what that means is, if I load up that test page, hello from Maine. Absolutely amazing. So if we take a look at the code here, what I'd really like to see is minified code. So Slater, if you're watching, some minified code would be absolutely amazing. Maybe minified in the production version, but non-minified in the dev version. To be fair, I haven't actually looked at the production version, so could very well be the case, but minification would be good. If I create a new file here, uh, console log hello from test, save to dev or command S as a shortcut, refresh this, hello from main, hello from test. Now, uh, what I would like to see, in fact, actually, is to be able to, be able to reorder these files. So you, you saw that it ran main and you saw it then ran test. Now, I have a feeling these are alphabetical. I have that in here and then that gets pushed to the top, presumably. No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, trust me, before test was above main. And regardless, I'm going to delete that file, regardless, it would be nice to be reordering them because you saw here it loaded main and then it loaded test. Well, what if I want test to run before main? That would be something great to have. But ultimately, this is a great way to organize many, many, many lines of JavaScript beyond a 10,000 code limit and just organize it in a project that simply just gets loaded on your, um, on your Webflow website. The cool thing here as well, like I say, 
it's really cool that you can learn JavaScript and it uses AI to do this and it doesn't count towards any credits, it doesn't cost you anything extra. So really, really cool. Again, my only bit of feedback here is that I searched, I wanted to know if I can import the contents of main into test, you know, using something you might have um, export um, const hello and then make that actually, what am I doing? There we go. And then import that in, in test, right? Uh, you can't do that. But the point is, is that I tried searching using the AI feature how to do that. And it doesn't contextualize it within the, the, the Slater tool, or at least it doesn't decide. So of course, you can. It's the idea is that you learn JavaScript, right? And then it just told me how I might import files from one to the other. It didn't tell me that uh, Slater can't do this, but this is how you would do it. So overall, really, really cool tool. You can also do CSS files, which is great. I'd personally leave CSS to. Um, a, tend to keep CSS minimal in Webflow projects, but just for speed, because this is another network call doing it. But of course, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take that for what it is. You can also import libraries. I've tried importing GSAP to see if I can try and yeah, load GSAP through this thing. I've not been able to pick that apart yet, but I'm sure it wouldn't take long to, to do so. Um, so overall, really, really cool tool. So I'm going to be creating a separate video on actually running local JavaScript code and how you might access that within Webflow. There are still reasons why you might want to do that, just have it absolutely locally, such as building a JavaScript library or something. But if you don't need all that, then this is a great solution. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour of Slater. Um, I'm certainly going to be using it on some projects, uh, particularly because of the big code limit. I can already think of a client that could certainly do with this. But if you want to hear more about no code tools, such as Webflow, then uh, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, Happy no coding.